welcome back to Banner Saga. Griffinheim is quite a few days out, but nothing worse than crossing the wastes, I imagine. If there's anywhere you might be safe from Dredge, it's there. You steal yourself another long march and have the town of Wormtown drawn in seal. Well, we have lots of clansmen, not so much for fighters in Val. So we're not very suited for any big war. While walking the words of Mother's Song reach you, it's soothing, nuanced and about your current journey. When she finishes, a man begins a tale of his own verse. The woman quickly responds with another poem and the entire car runs close to listen to the entertaining competition. Mm. Join the crowd and cheer. The man's response is an upbeat poem which questions the mother's cooking. The caravan explodes with laughter and the contestants continue, and may I believe for another hour or so. You hear snippets of the poems along the trail the rest of the day, the words changing slightly each time. Morale is important, especially when you're just going straight forward, not turning back. A woman's stifled screams fail to overly concern anyone. It was only a matter of time before the expectant mother gave birth. The caravan is simply excited by this si first sign of new life since the trip began. Hmm. May I think we should give her time to rest. When the baby's cries replace the mother's, the entire caravan cheers. You raise your drink to the family, saying, Tomorrow we rest and feast the strength of our long life. Again, everyone cheers, glad to forget their worries for a small time. You haven't seen Alette for much of the day. When you do find her, she's returning to camp alone, from a fair distance away, looking rather sullen. She keeps her eyes on the ground as you approach. What's going on? I feel like things are changing so quickly. It's not just that, everything is going wrong. I've been thinking, talking to Ekyo a lot. This gets your attention. What has he been telling you? He told me how he and Onef are keen. Ekil had a sister who married Onef, but she died a long time ago. They've been bound since, but then Onef left without him. Just left him behind without a word. That's why he came after us. Mm, don't trust that man, just... Don't. I don't, says Alet. I'm not stupid, you know. I don't go alone, I always bring Oddleaf with me. She stalk, she stalks off back to camp. At least with Oddleaf there, you feel a little better about things. That's true. The godstone of Marek looms into view. Upon it carved a great ocean beast. Jagged stones ju jut out of the snow like shark fins. It's hard to imagine the north felling wastes being filled with water at one time, but the godstone stands as a reminder of the vast lake it used to look across. A blessing! shouts Ao, shouts one of the men in your caravan, holding up what looks like a silver coin. It's a fish scale! He says, pointing out the rainbow pattern that shows in the sunlight. Soon, a curious child has found another hiding in the snow, and then a third is discovered. Perhaps they'll bring us luck, you overhear 
and before long the program has become obsessed with gathering the shining scales. Uh, cut them off if they are reasonable. I'm not uh, yeah. When you awake to find people still searching for snow and shrubs, you call it off. We can spend another day here, tell them. Be glad for the luck you found and let's go before it runs out. They fed and moaned, but eventually you get them back on the trail. Why it declined? We can't spend a week searching. Olive leave calls you over, grinning, a row of women holding bow bows of different age and experience line up before a row of trees in the distance. They fire, doing an impressive job of hitting the trunks. I think they are, they are ready to feel some dietary feathers. One woman still hasn't shot her arrow. She stands perfectly still, the others watch. Just as the wind sh shifts, she lets go, and her arrow flies not into one of the trees. But a snow rabbit that had scurried out from underneath. Dinner, she, sa she says, smiling. A group of men from the caravan approach. Listen here. Practice all you want. My wife isn't fighting Dredge. The other men agree in curse. We don't want to see a battlefield full of dead wives and daughter. Uh, stand by the woman. The men argue their point but eventually relent. Thanks, says Oddly. To be honest, it was harder than I expected, but the more people who can hold their own, the better. The women return to camp not just as clansmen, but as fighters. Ooh. Some clansmen have discovered a large patch of wild fruit. When you approach, you see some people who have begun to sample them. A mother frets about whether they're safe after overhearing one of the children say that it tastes funny. Other starts gathering by the basket. Uh, observe someone who already ate. After a short time, you know the slurred speech of a young man partaking of the fruit. Besides a little chunk, he seems perfectly fine. Take a bite. Several watch as you taste the fruit. You pause after swallowing and thing choking. All it rushes to your side in a panic, but your laughter soothes everyone concerned. Soon everyone is a little tipsy from the fermented fruit and spirits are high. You hear a whistle on the wind and spot a long line of varl far up ahead, heading toward you. Behind them is a swarm of dredge and a trail of bodies leading off into the distance. Get down here, there, barks Kramer. Okay, we're going. Don't let them spread out, shouts the lead Farl as you approach the battleground. Soon you almost regret finding yourself fighting alongside them, facing off against a daunting number of red. Okay, yes, 164 of them. We have... Okay, we can charge. Yeah, I think we can charge. Let's see. Oh, we will take fast salt instead of one of the brothers, I think. Oh, well, Onev, Mogun, you'll be promoted. Let's see, everything's. What is it? Plus one armor, plus one strength, plus one will. You could you could use that. I have, yeah, we have you. Okay, I think we are ready for what's to come. Oh, 
Okay, old leaf. <sighs> won't you over here? You have lots of armor, so won't you? You actually have more. <laughs> okay, I actually want both of you over here. I want you to help with those guys. And the two of you just stand where you are. Really? Okay, I can hit this guy. Five snacks. Okay, you have five willpower, so I should have just used it. Leaf. Okay, it doesn't matter <laughs> which she does. Oh, that's good. Yes, get closer to Hogun. Everything. <laughs> He should have gone for this side. I fucked that up. And I know it. Five, nine. And you have malice. Actually, go this way. Okay, let's try him a bit more. Ooh. Yeah, that hurt. Doesn't make any sense. No! But it was already too late. How much armor does he have? 12. You know what? Uh, attack this guy because. No, he didn't get hurt, so I don't get it what he meant by. Dredge destroying armor. She will help him. And again, bloody flail. That's good. I need you to help them. Oh, well, this one's probably... No! They are doing a lot better. Uh, okay, this is the one I think that's... Oh no, no, oh no, the Q changes. Oh, he won't be able to kill him. And I can't get there in time. Seriously. Okay, okay, kill him. I just can't. Oh, I forgot about this, but it won't. It won't affect her, them. Yeah, he's on full health, so... Now he shouldn't be any threat. Four, 
14. Come on. <laughs> no. God damn it. Hmm, you still have... Yeah, we can still use flail. Really? Oh, you have four. So we'll go over here. Try it. He has nice fun. Right, so, which I don't need right now. Just destroy his armor more. So we don't care about his stun anymore. Take a moment to survey the battlefield, the enemy is being pushed back all the way down the line. <sighs> this will be hard, won't it? Drive and save a few lives. No. You took the risk. And we have no one injured, which is important. <laughs> Isn't this a damn curiosity? This is the second time I've been sent to find a Varro who is heading my direction with humans in tow. What are Dredge doing up, the, up here? Because <laughs> does nobody know what's going on around here? They leveled Grofheim to the ground. We've been losing ground for days. Yorns in Einar town now. They've sent me to gather Krumr and rest from Wormro when we run across this bunch of slag. And there's a lot more where they came from. In is this all the world you've got, Krumr? What you've been doing? Eating each other? Many went to bl bl Blood's bulk. Are you telling me Grofheim is completely gone? And Wagner is dead? Slag on our heels, the Varlius and Ofnorf are probably dead. The world's ending. Come on, this is old news. We're gathering in Einartov. Well, that's where we need to go right now. Wait. Fassel takes a long moment to look out over the caravan of men, women and children behind you. Not them. What do you mean, not them? Unless you are king or mentor, you must don't step foot in Einartov. Now isn't the time for this discussion. Damn it, Fassel, who cares about this? What in the depths happened to Grofheim? Before Fasselt can reply, a low rumble grabs your attention, growing louder by the moment. Even though it's beyond sight, all, we, all eyes turn in Grofheim's direction as the rumbling becomes deafening, transforming quickly into cracking and splintering. It's coming closer. Go! shouts Fasselt, taking all forward in our oath. Don't stop until you reach Hardbrook. Because the world is falling apart.
After three terrifying days of tremors, you reach the godstone of Harborg, which is teeming with Varl who want to know what is happening. Others basely manned makeshift defenses set around the godstone of Harborg, creator of the Varl. Hold up, pants fussled between long gasps of air. We're going to have a talk. <sighs> You're still standing, well, most of you. Rest up, then move on. A mountain just sunk into the earth and some... Something is out there. You're just going to send us away? I don't know who you are, but you're not going into Einartorft. There's a couple hundred Varl here who will back that up. Where are we supposed to go? Back the way we came? We're stuck between two mountain ranges. In one direction, a few thousand Varl. In the other, an army of dredge and whatever caused that quake. Einartoft is a Varl city. This shouldn't be news to a Varl. Give it a rest, fuzzled. Don't you recognize who you're talking to? Surprise suddenly flashes across Fassel's face. The other Varl are starting to come closer now. You hear Ingvar being whispered between them. I think this might be the one person you want to let into Einartoft. You're... The humans come with me. All of them. Fasled glances between Ivor and Krum before stalking away, pushing past the mob of curious onlookers. Ivor, who are you? Some other time, look. You spend the rest of the day recovering. Varls come and go in packs and most just <laughs> and most of the chatter is about the quake that just sank mountains into the earth, or the dredge that are still on their way. You hear rumors that a massive chasm opened where the earth split. Okay, inspect the good stuff. The little you know about Hardborg is that he was a disciple of the Loom Mother and learned to create under her guidance. He created a few beasts, but soon became bored with simple animals and began combining men and beasts ending up with Varl. That's the myth, anyway. One thing is certain, each Varl alive today was created by Hardbrook, and now it, the god is dead. The Varl here now are the last ones that will ever exist. A profound sadness washes over you. Krum is already here. It is good to pay respects, he says, and you both stand there in silence. Give this to Ingvar, he says, during the leaf. It was once his, and that stubborn ass refuses to take it back. Krum hands you a massive studded belt. Suddenly, there's a lot of activity. Ward comes from below to retreat to the next village over, and you soon see why. A black shadow is sweeping down the valley from the direction of Grofheim, where the quake, or whatever caused it, has obliterated the mountainside. On closer inspection, it's a veritable ocean of dredge, more than you imagine possible. In their midst is a towering giant of a dredge, blood red from head to toe. You gather your things in short order and join a good many varl within the godstone behind. You notice most of the Varl pacing while others sleep, the brief conversation with each other and the other clansmen grow shorter and sharper. Go away! Rose one Varl at a young girl, asking him too many questions. All the clansmen stop and stare. I'm impressed you've kept it together this long. The Varl's embarrassment slowly morphs into irritation. We endure many pains, he says, sneering at the gawking crowd. As he stalks off, the crowd murmurs common insults about the giants. I, I thought it was... For me, it sounded more like an insult toward the girl for being too... No, nosy. Uh -huh. Ivor tells you we can't stay here long. It will take three straight days to cross Bura Pass, so stock up. There's no stopping once we leave. He takes off to speak with the other Varl about setting up defenses. Dad, says Alex, appearing at his side. 
I like old Ivar. Somewhere in the back of your mind you feel the same way. You focus on preparations instead, realizing that you may be the one of the first humans about to set foot in Ein Artoft. Mark it. First of all, plus two armor, that's nice. Plus two break. Take this thing. Mm. Mm, no. We'll get a lot. I think 27 is enough. I hope it is. Okay, who wants even more armor? You have 11, you have 18. Plus 3 break, and he has this. Plus 2 strength. So now he is 15, 15. Okay, it, was, it would be 15, 17. I can give. No, I cannot give you more strength. I could give you more strength. This for level 3 as well. Can we promote you? Yep. Break. And that. Alright, but I think this is a fairly good place to end this part. So for now, thank you so much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!